Hello everyone, welcome back to our series on what does the Bible say. Today we will be exploring the topic of depression. First, if you are dealing with depression, there will be links and phone numbers below for resources to help you if you are needing immediate assistance. Depression is a widespread condition affecting millions of people, Christian and non-Christian alike. Those suffering from depression can experience intense feelings of sadness, anger, hopelessness, fatigue, and a variety of other symptoms. They may begin to feel useless and even suicidal, losing interest in things and people that they once enjoyed. Depression is often triggered by life circumstances, such as a loss of a job, death of a loved one, divorce, or psychological problems, such as abuse or low self-esteem. There are other biological causes as well, such as chemical imbalances and hereditary conditions. The Bible tells us to be filled with joy and praise. Philippians 4, 4 and Romans 15, 11. So God apparently intends for all to, all of us to live joyful lives. This is not easy for someone suffering from situational or long-term depression, but it can be remedied through God's gifts of prayer, Bible study, and application support group, fellowship among believers, confession, forgiveness, and counseling. We must make the conscious effort not to be absorbed in ourselves, but to turn our efforts outward and towards others. Feelings of depression can often be solved when those suffering with depression move the focus from themselves to Christ and others. Clinical depression is a physical condition that must be diagnosed by a physician. It may not be caused by unfortunate life circumstances, nor can the symptoms be alleviated by one's own will. Contrary to what some in the Christian community believe, clinical depression is not always caused by sin. Depression can sometimes be caused by a physical disorder that needs to be treated with medication and or counseling. Of course, God is able to cure any disease or disorder. However, in some cases, seeking a doctor for Depression is no different than seeking one for an injury. There are some things that those who suffer from depression can do to alleviate their anxiety. They should make sure that they are staying in the word even when they do not feel like it. Emotions can lead us astray, but God's word stands firm and unchanging. We must maintain strong faith in God and hold even more tightly to him when we undergo trials and temptations. The Bible tells us that God will never allow temptation in our lives, that it's too much for us to bear, but he will give us a way out. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Although being depressed is not a sin, one is still account accountable for the response to the affliction, including getting the professional help that is needed. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that confess his name. Hebrews 13, 15. There is help for people who struggle with depression. I struggle with depression as well. I have been given so much blessing to be able to stand firm against it and to be able to handle this weight despite its gravity, despite its struggle, despite everything that comes against me. I am strong when I am weak, because he is strong when I am in weakness. I want to let you guys know that I am praying for each and every one of you, and that I love each and every one of you so much, so much. Never let your depression push you past the point of no return. If you feel like you cannot reach out to another human being, reach up, reach up to God. I did, and that's the only reason I'm here. I reached up to God in my distress, and he brought me peace. He brought me love and joy, and he brought me support through brothers and sisters in faith that I had not known existed before, that I did not know were my brothers and sisters. Life isn't always easy. The Bible promises us that we will face trouble, but that we will also have a helper. Holy Spirit is always here for us. Holy Spirit is always here to help us. We just have to ask him. Thank you, and have a blessed day. God bless you. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the gift of your son. And if there are those here that do not know of his sacrifice on the cross for us, I wish to share the message of the gospel. He who knew no sin became 
sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus lived a sinless life, died on a Roman cross, was buried for three days, and was wrote, risen from the dead by the Father's power so that he could fulfill the requirements to save us from ourselves, to save us from our sin, to save us from damnation. We thank you for this gift of of salvation, this free gift of salvation, with only one cost, our lives, our old sinful lives, which aren't worth much anyway, so it's a small price to pay to see glory coming. We thank you for this gift of salvation and that those who hear this message and hear these words might be saved through your grace. It is not of our own works. We can't boast about it except for boasting about the cross and Christ crucified. We thank you for this gift of grace. We thank you for this gift of, of communication across boundaries of time and space and miles upon miles, that this tool called the internet could be used to make your name known to many. We thank you for this gift. We thank you for this mission. We thank you for your son, and we thank you for your provision in your name. Amen. Thank you. Have a blessed day and take care of yourselves.